Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're creating an abstract Voronoi effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two month trial that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So quite a few people have got in touch with me these last few weeks asking how to create this kind of effect by Roman Baracci. This guy's got some really cool work on his Instagram page, so make sure you go and check him out. I'll put a link down in the description. As far as I can tell from the comments, he used particles to drive a Voronoi fracture. But let's hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can do it without particles and without any plugins. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is bring something in that we can shatter. So we'll come up here and we'll bring in a sphere. And now we wanna shatter it up. So with it selected, we'll come up to MoGraph and we'll bring in a Voronoi fracture. Don't forget to hold Alt so it's automatically applied to our sphere. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see we've got all of our colorful shattered shards in here. And the next thing we wanna do is see if we can animate these shards so they move around the surface of our sphere. So let's figure out how these shards are being made. If we go over to the sources tab, we'll find our point generator, which is generating all of these little green points on our mesh. And each one of these points is telling the Voronoi fracture where to fracture. And we can adjust the point amount over here. If we bring that down from 20 to two, you can see we've got two points and two fractured pieces. But the problem with the point generator is that it's not very easy to animate. We don't have many settings to play with down here. We just have the seed value. And if we adjust that, we're not going to get a very smooth animation. So let's delete that guy and we'll do it a different way. Let's come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a matrix. And our matrix comes in as a grid to begin with, but we want all of these little cubes to be on the surface of our sphere to control our shattering. So let's come over here to the mode and change it from grid array to object mode. And then it's asking for an object here. In this case, we'll use our sphere. So we'll just drag that guy into here. And now you can see we've got all of our matrix points across the surface of our sphere. So now if we go back to our fracture, we can use our matrix as a source to drive our fracturing. So we'll drag that guy down into the sources window here. And there you go. Each one of these cubes is giving us a different shard and telling it where to fracture. So setting it up this way is going to give us a lot more flexibility when we go to animate these. So to animate our matrix points, we'll grab our matrix first, then we'll come back to the MoGraph menu, we'll go to Effector, and you've got loads of effectors to choose from, but this time we'll go with a random effector. And at first we've got them shooting off away from the sphere, which we don't really want. So let's come over to the parameter tab and we'll change this Z value here. If we make it zero, they should hug closer to the surface of our sphere like this. And now we wanna figure out a way to give them a bit of random movement. So we'll go over to the Effector tab. And if we look down here, we've got this random mode, which is currently set to random. But if we change that to noise, we can now control their positioning with a noise shader, which is great because we can animate noise. And if we hit play, you can actually see that animation already. It's probably a little bit crazy at the moment, so we can bring that down by changing the animation speed. And that's looking a bit better. Let's just pause that. We probably don't need to see these points for now. So we'll come up here and hide those. Our effect should still work with those hidden. Let's give it a go. Yep, yeah, that's looking good. And this might look a bit better if we add a gap between each one of these shards. So we'll go back to our fracture. And under the object tab, we've got this offset fragments down here. So we'll bring this up and get a one centimeter gap between each shard. And now if we hit play, we get something like that, which is pretty close to the effect we're after. You could even add more of these shards quite easily. If we go back to the matrix object, we just need to increase the count. Let's try 80 and give that a play. 
It is looking cool, but you might notice we're getting this weird flickering effect. And that's because if we make our matrix visible again, some of these guys are crossing paths and intersecting with each other. You can probably see that better if we hit play. They're just moving randomly back and forth, so occasionally we're getting that effect. But we can probably minimize that. If we go back to our random effector and over to the parameter tab, we could just bring these down so they're moving less distance and therefore not crossing paths so much. Let's try a value of 40 centimeters in both of these. Then we'll hide our matrix again and hit play. And that seems to have fixed the flickering, but you can see how this setup does have its limitations. All of our shards are just undulating back and forth, which is kind of a cool look, but ideally we want this to look a bit more organic. So I'll show you another way we can set this up so that our shards don't intersect and float around our sphere a bit more dynamically. So let's stop that there. And we'll come up here and grab our random effector and our matrix and we'll just delete those. And instead, we'll come back to the MoGraph menu and this time we'll use a cloner. And we need something to clone. So back up here, we'll bring in a sphere. And if we hold shift when we click on that, it'll become a child of our cloner and we'll get some clones. At the moment, it's cloning straight up like that, but we actually want it to be cloned along the surface of our sphere. So we'll go back to the cloner and down here under mode, we want to change that from linear to object. Then we'll grab the sphere we want these to clone onto and drag that into the object slot. And you can see we've got all our clones, but they're a bit big at the moment. So let's grab that and we'll bring the radius right down to something like eight centimeters. Okay, so now we've got all of our clones along the surface of our sphere. Like we did before, we want these to drive our fracture. So we'll go back to our Voronoi Fracture and over to the Sources tab. And this time we'll drag our cloner into the Sources box here. And our computer's starting to lag a bit. Okay, it's shattered this way too much. It is kind of a cool effect, but it's not quite what we're after. So let's have a look at the settings and see what's going on. If we click on our cloner over here, you can see that the source creation method here is set to vertices which means all of the vertices in our clones, these green dots here, are creating extra fractured pieces. And there's obviously way too many of them. So let's change that from vertices. We wanna use volume. So now we've got a lot less points and a lot less shattered pieces, but our clones still have quite a lot of points inside there. Ideally, we just want one point per sphere. And we can control that down here with the point amount. Right now there's 20 points per sphere but we want to bring this down to just one point for each. And now we're pretty much back to where we were in the previous example. So how do we go about animating these across the surface of our sphere and not have them touch each other or intersect? One way we could do it is with dynamics. So we'll grab our cloner, then up to tags, simulation tags, and we'll make it a rigid body. And if we hit play, they just fall to the ground, which means the dynamics are affecting it now. And you'll also notice it's affecting our fracture as it falls. You can see those shards are just following those clones along. So that's promising, but we don't want these guys to fall straight down. We want to turn off the gravity so they stay in place. So we'll hit control D on the keyboard to bring up the project settings. And we'll go over to the dynamics tab. And here's the setting for gravity. Let's just bring that down to zero. And if we hit play, they should stay put. Okay, to give these guys a bit of movement and make sure they stay on the surface of our sphere, we need to bring in an attractor. So we'll go up to simulate, particles, and here's our attractor. And now if we hit play, we're not really getting the result we want. That's because all of our clones are being treated as one big object, but we want the dynamics to look at them as individual spheres. So we'll go back to our dynamics tag and down here under individual elements, We'll just switch that to top level. And now if we hit play, they're all being attracted in toward each other. And if we hide our Voronoi fracture, you can see this a bit better. They all come towards each other and explode out everywhere, which is not quite what we want. We want them to be attracted inward, but stay rolling around on the surface of our bigger sphere. So let's come up here and turn that back on. And we'll grab our big sphere here and we'll make a duplicate. So holding the control key, we'll click and drag it up here. And there's our duplicate. And this guy is going to be our collider. 
so our clone spheres need to collide with it. Let's just hide our fracture again while we're playing with this new sphere. Then with our new sphere selected, we'll go to Tags, Simulation Tags, and we'll make that a collider body. And if we hit play, they collide straight away and shoot off out into space. And that's because if we zoom in a little bit, at the start of the simulation, they're intersecting with our collider. And you can see that again, there they go. So we need to offset these before the simulation begins. And that's pretty easy to do. Let's just go back to our cloner. And over under the transform tab, we can offset our clones in the Z axis. If we bring that up, now they're no longer touching. And now if we hit play, they're attracted inward for just a second before they hit the surface of our sphere here. Okay, so let's take a look at our attractor settings here. Under the object tab, we've got a few different options. Right now our strength is set to 10. And if we hit play, you can see that's giving us a fairly slow attraction inward before everything comes to a stop. But if we were to bring this up to something like 200, that should give a bit more motion to our clones. And if we play that, this time when they hit, they start rolling around on the surface. And we could probably give ourselves a few more frames to play with here. Let's try 800. And we'll give that a go. And now you can see we're starting to get this nice organic movement. And none of these clones intersect with each other. They're just colliding with each other now that they're being driven by dynamics. Let's pause that there. We can actually hide that new sphere we've created for the collisions. And that should still work. Let's just test it. Yep, looking good. Then we can turn our fracture back on. And we're just about there. All of our clones are controlling the fracture. And if we take a look, that's looking pretty good. We could even pause that and hide our clones. And there you go. That's pretty much the effect that we're after. Again, we could stop that and go back to our cloner over to the object tab. And we could bring that count up to get more of these pieces in here. Again, let's try 80. And that's looking better. And now if we play that back, we've got our nice organic movement, no intersecting and flickering. And we're just about finished with this tutorial. But before we do, let's have a quick look at how to go about texturing and rendering this. If we fire off a render now, you can see we've already got a bunch of colors in here. Let's see what's causing that over in our Voronoi fracture. We've got an option down here called Colorize Fragments. And that's giving us a different color for each fragment over here, which is just making it a bit easier to see. So let's uncheck that. We want a bit more control over the colors here. So with our Voronoi Fracture selected, we'll come up to MoGraph, Effector, and we want random colors. So let's bring in a random effector. And we don't want it affecting the position of our shards. So let's go over to Parameter, and we'll just switch that off. The option we're after here is the color mode. So we'll switch that from off to effector color. So now we've got these lovely colors instead, but we still don't have much control over which colors are being used. So let's go back down to the blending mode. We'll set that to subtract and that's given us some brighter colors, but they seem a little bit intense. Let's go over to the effector tab and see what's going on here. You can see down here, we've got a minimum and maximum for our color values. Now we're getting these very bright colors because we've got negative values in here. So let's zero that out. And that's looking a bit more natural. And now we've just got values between zero and a hundred. So this is the base for our random color. Let's come down here and make a new material. Just double click in this window. Then we'll grab it and drag it onto our fracture. And the default color is white and that's what we can see here. So now we'll double click on that and take a look at this material. Let's just move this guy out of the way. Now we want to look in the color channel here. Over here where it says texture, we'll click on this little arrow and we'll come down here to MoGraph. And to get the colors out of our random effector, we'll use a color shader. So now we can see those same colors again, but this time it's within our material. So to customize these colors, we need to layer in over our color shader. If we click here, we'll bring in a colorizer. And now we've got these red and yellow colors on here. Let's click into our colorizer. And here's those same colors here. So now we can just go about customizing this. Let's change that to maybe a green. And that's updated over here now. If you pop this open, 
We could even bring in a preset gradient. Let's grab this super colorful one here. And now we've got all of those colors applied to our shards. Let's close this guy. There's also a few ways you can change the distribution of these colors. If we go back to the random effector, down here under the random mode, right now it's set to random, but we can cycle through these. We've got Gaussian, which gives you that look. Then there's noise, turbulence, and sorted. This mode's probably my favorite because you can come down here and change the seed value and you can quickly get different color combinations. And that's pretty much it for our abstract Voronoi effect. Don't forget you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And if you're into your abstract art in Cinema 4D, you might like to check out our brand new online course, Ultimate Abstract Art, where you'll learn how to create each one of these artworks. There's also a link to that down below. That's it for today. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.